Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the custom furnaces again. Uh, this time around what we're going to be actually looking at are as well as a furnace, a couple block states as well. So I have a functional version right here uh, that you can see that um, it has a fuel slot, it has a um, uh, actual smelting slot and it has a uh, output slot as well. So as you can see it's going down on fuel here and up here what it's doing is every time it's basically using fuel um, it has a uh, kind of like a timer on how long the fuel can be used and then it will uh, keep running as long as that bar or percentage um, has fuel so this is actually smelting two times per one log and then it um, turns it into stone um, I've made it so you can customize the fuel and the fuel fuel properties <laughs> okay then um, so to demonstrate it uh, you can actually open up a closed furnace and it will be the same GUI uh, what you can do is if we just grab some logs again and some cobblestone and then we'll stick our logs there, stick our cobblestone there, it closes out of the GUI, however when we open it it's the same thing. So and then it will start smelting, it already took a, a log for fuel and it's just uh, starting to smelt things now. So when it actually runs out of fuel, if we take a little bit of this out, I'll leave one extra thing there. Um, it'll automatically turn off too. So it's on its last fuel and it's just smelting. So we are currently have no fuel, it's on its last little run. So it should turn off um, after it's finished. So as you can see, it closed out the GUI and we still have our items. We can pick those out if we want to. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, the basic um, furnace recipe. You can also get uh, experience, although I'm not sure. Game mode zero, survival. Yeah, I guess you get a little bit of experience. It just doesn't notify you every time that you've gotten it. Every time uh, you've basically gotten experience, there's a percent chance of um, yeah, gaining a little bit. So as you can see, it does work. You gain a little bit of experience and stuff. Anyhow, uh, let's hop into the code and I'll show you how it all works. It's actually quite simple when it comes down to it. Um, we'll start with the GUI first. And uh, the GUI we need, uh, basically I have some a title up here for the custom furnace. So the, the text I have used is uh, 20 on the uh, offset for Y, so this would be 20, and uh, that's also 20. Slots I've used are 32, so you would want to do Y offset 32 for the slots, and uh, any buttons or anything like that, um, it would be 29. But we don't have any buttons because it's a furnace recipe. So. Um, your, your output slot is going to be 0, your smelting slot is going to be 1, and your output slot is going to be 2. So when you have all that set up, we can start working on the off state. So you're going to want a texture for your sides, top and bottom. When you have that all done, um, most of the other settings are fine. You might want to set the rotation up for uh, player side, southwest, northeast, and you don't need a custom model unless you want a custom model, and then that's okay. Just make sure to set up your uh, block dimensions accordingly for that model. And um, I have the material sound set to, to rock, sound on step to stone, and uh, furnaces and stuff are generally found under decorations, so you can put uh, the creative tab there or whatever. Um, Hardness and resistance are both 3.5 for furnaces and luminescence. Uh, this is for the light level and stuff. I have that for zero for the off state. 
Um, the on state you would want to give a little bit of a glow. I'm not sure how much though, so I'm not, I had I didn't look in. I didn't have time to look into that. Uh, lighting opacity. Uh, this is how clear it is. I would set that to 255. That's fine. Uh, has gravity? No. Can walk through? No. Uh, custom drop, and that would be uh, nothing. It, you want it to drop itself. Uh, drop amount one. Affected by silk touch. Uh, disable that. Uh, create a pick item. Same item as the drop. That's fine. Tool able to destroy. You want a pickaxe, and everything else is fine. Just make sure to set the harvest level to zero. And if we move on to tick rate, you want the tick rate to be one. Uh, your block on or block color on the map should be stone and uh, I believe yeah and then restriction to being pushed you want to set that to block because it has the whoop. I just saved that I didn't mean to do that all right so the next thing that we have to set up is the actual GUI itself so after you've created the GUI you need to enable uh, bound open bound GUI on right click enable that and uh, select your furnace GUI so I only have one GUI so just select that one and uh, size of inventory you want to set this to three and maximum size of stack you want to set that to 64 drop of drop items when block is destroyed and enable that and enable block output data I would enable that as well uh, comma separated list of ideas of output slots we only have one output slot so we just need to mark number two because two is our output slot uh, the next thing I have is uh, one procedure uh, this is for the update tick uh, we're basically calling the um, calling the furnace to uh, our recipe so a recipe is right here and what this is doing is a lot of other stuff <laughs> it's a little bit complicated I modified the, um, the overall uh, furnace code so I'll try explaining how all this works in uh, actually right now so at the very beginning what it's doing is it's testing for if the furnace is in its off state and if um, the slot 0 and slot 1 are um, fuel slot and our smelting slot have greater than uh, items greater than 0 so if that's true then what it's going to do is set the block state to its on state and we want to Make sure it keeps the state and uh, keep NBT data or NBT slash inventory. So you want to enable both of these selector on state. And um, then what it's going to do on the next tick is it's going to test if the block is currently uh, on. So that's what we just changed it to. So it should be on. And then what it's going to do is test for a few other things. The first thing that it's going to be testing for is burn time. So burn time is an MBT data tag. I'm going to be getting to how to use MBT data tags and stuff like that later on this week, um, most likely on Friday. So we're basically, I'll cover how that all works, but uh, burn time is just basically how much time we have to burn. Um, so we're basically getting the output slot as well for or no, the fuel slot. So if it's greater than zero and if it's also uh, the burn time is equal to zero. So we if it's exactly at zero, then what we want to do is call the procedure for uh, fuel. So furnace fuel. So if we go over to furnace fuel, um, this is where you're going to set up your um, quote unquote recipes for um, your fuel slots. So if we go to Minecraft Wiki, 
I should have a smelting. Uh, where is it? So if we go to the uh, smelting wiki page for Minecraft, uh, if we scroll all the way down to uh, fuel, uh, you can find the exact tick rates for how long uh, fuel needs to be smelted for. So, or, you know, things like fuel sources that are smelted for. So you can use this as a base example. Um, I have in M Crater uh, a lava bucket, which is 20,000 ticks. Uh, and I have it also to do a little extra. So when we basically um, put the lava bucket in, it's going to output the uh, output slot to a lab or just a regular bucket, as well as set all the uh, time stuff up. I'll get to that in a second. So if you need this, uh, I will link to that um, on down below in the comments. So you can basically see all the different ticks and stuff like that. Uh, one thing to note though is, um, and there was a little bit of something. All right, so on this side, notes, there is Bedrock Edition only, and then there's Java Edition only, and then there's Empty Spaces. Empty Spaces are for both platforms, where um, other versions, for example, um, uh, let's see, where's a good example? The bulls here, there's two bulls, and one's for Java, one's for Bedrock. You wanna go with the Java version, uh, because uh, Bedrock's a different platform and uh, it would be 100 ticks for a bull where Bedrock has 200. I don't know why they didn't keep it the same. They just, they changed it, I guess, on the bla other platform. But uh, yeah, so if you want to add a new recipe, what you want to do is just uh, duplicate one of these, put that down. You want to adjust the item. So say you want to burn planks and I think planks are the same as wood logs, so that's fine. Um, you can set the burn time, so this is where the, the variable's coming into it. Um, this is the burn time for how long it's going to be smelted in ticks. So again, planks are the same as wood, so it'd be 300. And then what we're going to do is remove one item from slot zero, so this is our fuel slot. So we're basically removing one of those items. And if that's true, then uh, it gets passed over back to our recipe. And then we can check if burn time is greater than zero. So if it's one or above, then what we're going to do is um, check if uh, burn time is greater than zero, and then we're also going to uh, set burn time of the block. Um, we're going to get the block burn time, and then we're going to minus it by one tick. So every time this procedure is run, it's by one tick, remember? So uh, every tick, we're lowering the, um, the fuel number uh, whoops, by one. So it removes one tick off of that number. And if the, uh, the next thing that we're basically testing for is uh, furnace speed. So furnace speed is a little bit different. Um, I didn't actually set that up. This is uh, manually set up, I think. Should be manually set up. Uh, da, 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 da. Custom, nope, that's the update. Okay, furnace speed is a little bit different. It's um, 200. Uh, there isn't any major configuration for um, the furnace uh, speed, but default speed is 200, so for a regular furnace. I'm not sure what it would be for um, the actual blast furnace or anything like that. I haven't really looked into trying to figure all that out. There's not a lot of information I could find just on the furnace page alone. So um, I have set it to 200. This is this should be the same as a regular furnace. Uh, furnace speed is basically how fast it can smelt. So we're testing if the furnace speed is um, equal to 
or greater than 200. If true, then what it's going to do is, uh, oh, right, 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 right. There should be a timer somewhere around here. The timer's down here, that's right. Okay, so the furnace speed is um, a timer variable. So if it's uh, 200 or greater than 200, what it's going to do is set it, run the procedure. So it's going to then um, get slot two and we're going to check if uh, the amount of items of slot two is less than 64 and if the um, the slot one is has cobblestone then we're going to check if um, slot two is less than or equal to 63 and then we're going to also check for if um, slot two is equal to so if these things are true, then it's going to be able to smelt, or what it's going to do is check if the slot is air. If that's true, then it's going to remove one from the slot one, which is our smelting slot. It's going to call the XP reward. So if we go over to uh, our XP reward, um, I have set this up just quickly. Um, it uses MBT as XP mount, and uh, we're basically making a local variable first for a role. Uh, this is going to need to be set up before you import the procedure, so make sure you have that set up first. Uh, it needs to be a number variable, and uh, you can call it like XP role or something like that. Um, I have called it random roll. So this basically just rolls a random number and synchronizes it across of the whole procedure. So this is setting the roll to a random number, then it's checking to see if random roll is equal to or greater than 0 0.75. If true, then it's going to set the MBT data, get the MBT data, data and set a plus seven. So if it's 0 0.5, which is a uh, less, a 25, another 25% chance, it's going to do the same thing, but only give five experience. And if it's 0 0.5 or greater than, then it's going to do this exact same thing, but only give three experience. If it's less than that, uh, it's not gonna run this procedure. It's just going to not give any experience. So that's how the XP thing works. So when it's calling that in the main procedure, that's what's happening. And uh, the last thing that we need to do is we're basically setting the output slot to plus one stone. And then we're setting a, we're basically calling a sound for every time it basically smelts to play the furnace fire crackle um, sound effect at the level of one, pitch at one. And then we're basically um, resetting the um, fuel time or furnace speed to zero. So every time that the furnace speed goes around, it's going to set that to zero. So uh, right here is it's testing for it in that same block here. Um, it's basically setting it to zero. So if that runs, it's setting it to zero. Down below is where we're actually counting up with the MBT data tag. So it's getting the furnace speed and then it's getting the number and then it's um, adding plus one every tick. So that's where the furnace speed comes in. The furnace speed just basically is the time of which it ta an item takes to smelt. Uh, the furnace the burn time, the burn time is how much fuel we have in order to be able to smelt. And the last thing that it's going to do is if this is all false, uh, all these procedures here, if it's um, not currently have any, or if it's uh, does not have any burn, burn time left and Um, and the output slot is zero, then what it's going to do is, or no, the fuel slot is zero, then it's going to basically set the block state 
back to um, the off state. So what it's doing here is it's keeping the state and keeping the MBT slash inventory. Uh, both of these need to be enabled. I've added notes all through here to let you know how everything works. So it should be easy to see. So the last thing that we need to cover is one item removed. This is a procedure that we can find in our custom um, GUI. So if we click on slot two, uh, we can edit the when item taken from slot and we have uh, when item removed from slot. So when item is removed from slot, uh, what it's doing is it's adding um, an adding the XP amount, and what we're doing is we're getting the MBT data tag XP amount, so any amount of uh, items stored with the XP amount. Uh, we're basically um, having it set the XP amount to that. Uh, what you would also want to do, I just realized that there is a small bug that I need to fix right now. Uh, you would also want to go to block tags and set mbt data and set xp amount to zero so it resets the um, xp amount so it doesn't keep climbing so when you have all that set up um, it'll basically give you xp and then reset it to zero so that's basically how the furnace works if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i will see you on friday with how on how to use nbt data and uh, a tutorial on that. Thanks for watching. Peace out.